right, what's going on, you guys? Nick here with Nick Strength and Power. I've got a couple of interesting stories for you guys today. The first story, we've talked about Big Rami arriving home in Egypt and the hero's welcome that Rami received. But Hadi Chupin recently arrived back in his home country of Iran. And Hadi got quite the people's champion welcome himself, riding on the shoulders um, of some of the locals there. And we saw this last year, too, when Hadi finished top three. Um, and he arrived back in the airport last year. He got quite the welcome. And that, at the time, was one of the biggest welcomes we ever saw. And that was just for someone taking the top three. Um, and the pride that Hadi's country has in his accomplishments, the fact that he was able to go over to America twice, um, you know, against all odds, and not only compete, but compete successfully, even though this year he was one placing lower. I think a lot of people would agree he still looked fantastic. He almost beat Phil Heath, who was a seven-time Mr. Olympian. I think Heidi Chupin in fourth place, um, a very close fourth place. Keep in mind, on the scorecards, Heidi was in second on the judges' scorecards at the night show, but he wasn't at pre-judging. So Heidi put together a very impressive Olympia package. He compared very favorably um, with most of the top guys. And I think his return to his home country reflected that. Everybody was proud of him. He's the pride um, of Iran. And everybody is glad to see Hadi Chupin do well. I think the Middle Eastern fan base and bodybuilding, whether it's Rami's fan base um, in Egypt, Hadi's fan base in Iran, um, this is one of the most passionate bodybuilding fan bases there is. Um, and of course, we saw it to a little bit higher degree with Rami because Rami actually won the Olympia. But Hadi taking fourth, getting this type of uh, reception, I think is amazing. And I think the Middle Eastern fans in general need to be appreciated a little bit more in bodybuilding because they really represent um, a large majority of the viewership and fan base of these bodybuilding shows. And I even see it in my YouTube analytics. A lot of uh, countries that watch my channel are Middle Eastern countries. And it's cool to see that bodybuilding kind of over it kind of overshadows everything else, all the political stuff, all the cultural stuff. We can all get along um, and be fans of bodybuilding. I think that's cool. We can all get along, be fans of Hadi. We can all get along, be fans of Rami. I love it. So shout out to Hadi Chupin getting the hero's welcome in his return to his home country. Now, next up in the news, I want to talk about classic physique a little bit today. So specifically, Logan Franklin. So Logan Franklin, this was his first classic physique Mr. Olympia. He did very well here. He was in the first call out. He wound up in ninth place at his first Olympia ever. So top 10 placing, not bad. I think all in all in this lineup, he just needed to fill out um, his upper body specifically, just fill out his frame a little bit more. But he posted this physique update recently, which I thought was interesting. He says, well, the rebound phase has officially begun. Here's a quick pic of the ridiculous chest pump I got today. Thanks to stuffed crust pizza I devoured last night. So he's all full here. He's all carved up. He's a lot rounder. He looks a lot more filled out than he did when he was more depleted at the show. He's a taller guy, so when you get depleted, you have a tendency um, to kind of look skinny on stage. I'm not saying he looks skinny, but it has that illusion a little bit more than if you were shorter. And he goes on to say, and this is what I find interesting, he says, I woke up at 223.6 pounds this morning, so he's 10 pounds up from his stage weight this past Mr. Olympia. Given that he can weigh in, at 230, that leaves me a lot of room for improvement. So if he's up 10 pounds at 223, that means he was roughly 212 on the Olympia stage with 20 pounds room to grow for his height category. So he can improve as far as putting on muscle by about 20 pounds of wiggle room, which is a lot. I think he could have came into the Olympia looking how he's looking in this picture um, a lot fuller a lot less flat, maybe carved up a lot, even maybe ate a couple cheat meals before going on stage. It would give him a much fuller look um, and not look so depleted, not look flat, and he would have stood out a lot more on stage because this physique that we're seeing in this picture right here is ridiculous. I know a lot of people have been critical of Logan saying he's not big enough yet, um, but I think Logan really has the ideal structure for classic physique. He's got a great V taper, crazy small waist, really wide shoulders, really wide upper body that narrows down to that waist. And as tall as he is, it makes the it makes the V-taper illusion a lot more dramatic. And he comes over from men's physique. And let's not forget men's physique, um, a heavy focus of that category is having a small waist, having a good V-taper, although not a heavy focus is having good legs. And Logan has great legs for a men's physique competitor coming into classic physique. So he says, I'm going to make the most of this rebound and give this progression season everything I've got because I promise you I'm more motivated than ever 
to maximize my aesthetics. And that is really the takeaway of this picture. He's got the frame. He's got the aesthetics. He's got the structure. Um, he just needs to maximize it. I think that's really all there is to it. You talk about good genetics. You talk about having just genetically a good structure for classic Logan is that guy he's got a really good structure for this division and I think he's going to go very far in this division like I said I, I just think he needs to fill out a little bit that's really all there is to it all right so next up in the news Big Rami so Dennis James posted a posing video of Big Rami at about a week out from the 2020 Mr. Olympia which of course Big Rami won the title at that show so Rami stayed with Dennis James and one of the things that Dennis did for Rami um, was specifically, he talked about this in a couple interviews or Instagram lives. He says every day he put Big Rami through a posing routine, making him hold the poses um, and really putting him through some posing training. And he thinks that's um, a big part of why Rami presented himself in a much better way this year because of all this extra posing practice with Dennis. So Dennis says in the caption, it's called putting in the work with Chad Nichols doing what he does best and having Rami's condition on point. It is very important that he is also ready to be able to display his shape and condition to the fullest. Posing plays a huge role, and being able to stand there for several rounds is hard work for a huge guy. Now, I could not agree more with Dennis on this. They obviously worked the hell out of basically the top four. Phil, Brandon, Hottie, Bonac, um, and Rami. They did a lot of comparisons with these guys. They were working them a lot over the course of pre-judging and the night show. And for a big guy with Rami, for, for a big guy like Rami, that could be very tiresome if you didn't have the practice. So I think it was very beneficial for Rami um, to have had this practice with Dennis. And he says, Rami did not miss a beat, and we post several times a day, first thing after waking up before cardio, and then again after cardio, before breakfast, and again before meals and after workouts. He was 100% prepared, and he would have been able to continue posing at prejudging and the confirmation round as long as they would have called him. He was ready to do whatever it takes to make his presence felt. I can't wait to see what Rami will bring in 2021. I wish you all a happy new year. So this is something I wanted to discuss in this video is 2021. Rami defending the title. Hopefully Brandon coming back. I believe he said in an interview he does intend um, to come back next year um, and try to reclaim the title. Rami, of course, I'm assuming will be there to defend his current title. But the thing that I'm wondering is what the next nine months are going to look like in bodybuilding. Because from what I understand, the Mr. Olympia will be back in September for 2021. It was only pushed to December this year because of obviously everything that's going on. But from what I've heard, it's going to be back in its original September time slot. So it's going back in September. So that means from the results of the Olympia to the next Olympia, it's not a year. It's nine months. You've got nine months between now and September. So Rami, Brandon, Phil, Hadi, Bonak, whoever that is preparing to come back and make another run at the title or defend their title. They've got nine months, not a year. So more importantly, something to think about is the guys that are not qualified yet for next year's Mr. Olympia. I think there's going to be a very similar thing that happened last year. There's going to be a lot of crunch time, last minute Olympia qualifier shows, because think about it. The Arnold Classic usually happens in March. As of right now, the Arnold Classic is indefinitely postponed. It's definitely not happening in March. It's probably not happening in the summer. It might not happen at all in 2021. And the Arnold Classic is a huge, I think it's the highest tier of Olympia qualifier show. A lot of people get to the Olympia based off their Arnold Classic placings. And the points that you can earn at the Arnold Classic are tremendous. So that opportunity right now looks like it might be gone. Then you think about another major show like the Arnold Classic Australia, which usually happens like a couple weeks after the Arnold Ohio. I have a feeling that show is not going to happen either. They haven't officially said that, um, but something tells me that show is going to be postponed as well. Remember last year, it was canceled last year as well. So I have a feeling a lot of these shows that you saw get interfered with last year, a lot of that same stuff is going to happen again this year, I think. Um, and you're going to have a lot of moving around of shows. And I think everything... It's going to be complicated, and it's going to be in a shorter period of time because you've only got nine months between now and September to figure out the Olympia, who's going to get there, how they're going to get there, how they're going to get points. Um, you know, just something to think about. But usually, when we have the Arnold Classic lead-up to the show in March, that's like the biggest thing in the beginning of the year. I would anticipate, as a bodybuilding fan, the next three or four months, the first quarter of 2021, to be almost completely dead as far as pro bodybuilding contests. I would expect there's not going to be a whole lot happening um, from now through April, really. Because if you think about it, when you lead up to the Arnold Classic, that's 
pretty much January, February, that's all you talk about is what's going to happen at the Arnold. Um, and then after that, you've got a couple other Arnold classics after the Arnold Ohio. Um, and then you got to wait till pretty much summertime for a lot of the shows like May starts uh, the New York Pro, the Indy Pro, stuff like that. So we might have quite a bit of downtime on our hands in the beginning of 2021, but we'll see. That's going to wrap it up for the video today, guys. I hope you did, in fact, enjoy it. Please give it a thumbs up if you did enjoy it. Please subscribe to the channel if you have not subscribed yet already. As always, I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. Nick Strength and Power, signing out.